Come on, kids. Wake the fuck up. Eddie Abu has skyrocketed in popularity over the last year. At the time of this video, he has over 2.9 million followers. I decided to buy his fat loss ebook, and I'm gonna give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. By the end of this video, you'll have a much better idea of how to structure your diet and whether you should listen to Eddie at all. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Dean and I'm one of the nutritionists here at Triage Method and we're a team of doctors, trainers, nutritionists and scientists that help people improve their health and body composition with evidence-based health and nutrition information. First, I wanna talk about what Eddie gets right and why I think he has become so popular. A big part of what makes Eddie so popular is that he's very entertaining and he doesn't give a fuck what other people think about him. What the fuck is this? It's a fucking underpants with skid marks in it. This is fucking shit. So, wake the fuck up. Another aspect of why he's amassed such a huge social media following is his very simple to follow dietary guidelines. Eddie's main message is that you should eat exclusively whole foods, cook for yourself, and avoid buying anything that's pre-made or comes from a package. In the book he says, make sure your food is cooked by a human being, not a corporation. He believes that processed foods is the source of many of our modern diseases, and that we can cure these diseases by eating well. He definitely has a point to this, but later I'll explain specifically what he gets wrong. With that being said, nobody with any sense is going to argue that eating more nutrient-dense foods like eggs, vegetables, and avocados won't have a positive impact on your health. This is something that we promote at Triage, eating a diet that is mostly whole foods with a real focus on getting enough protein and plenty of plant-based foods. Problems arise when we get to some of Eddie's other ideas and philosophies, and I'm gonna address six of the main ones from his book. In the book, Eddie says to lose fat we need to control one hormone and that is insulin. So the main premise here is by keeping our insulin levels low by eating lower carb or lower glycemic response foods we'll be able to lose fat. This hypothesis has been tested many times in the literature most notably by Kevin Hall's metabolic ward studies where they brought subjects into the lab controlled their calories and protein and then fed them either a high carb low fat diet or a high fat low carb diet. The studies found that not only did the high fat group not lose any greater amount of weight but the higher carb group actually lost slightly more. Because this study was done in a controlled environment and controlled variables such as calories and protein, we can be quite confident that calorie control is the key to fat loss, not insulin control. Eddie is very much against the idea of calorie counting and believes that if you just eat the right foods, you will lose weight. But the thing is, he's helping people to get into a calorie deficit, whether he wants to admit it or not. Because if you tell people to eat a lot of whole foods, more protein and more fiber, they will naturally feel more full and reduce their calorie intake. It's funny because in the book he says, if you've bought into the calorie deficit idea and it's working for you, this isn't for you. We believe in something different and it's served us well for years. This illustrates two things. First, he does recognize that the calorie deficit works for people. And second, that he is entirely driven by his beliefs, which is obvious when you look at his content because there's no reference to any studies or science at all. Like many low carb advocates, Eddie likes to promote some conspiracy theories. In the book he says, the food and pharmaceutical industries are in cahoots to deceive us. So let's talk about this next. This claim is often made by people who promote a natural way of living, that big pharma and big food are making a profit from killing us and that you should only eat naturally, like eating bull testicles. This type of message is an appeal to nature fallacy, where you believe that what's natural is always good, even though there's lots of things in nature that can kill us, and there's lots of synthetic products that save lives. Now, I don't think the food and pharma industries are angels, but I also don't think that they're trying to kill us slowly with their products. They are simply companies that are trying to make as much profit as possible. The food industry makes massive profits from creating foods that are incredibly tasty, high in calories, and using packaging and advertising that encourages us to overconsume. While ultra-processed foods do contribute to the development of disease, this is not a primary outcome that the board members of Mondelez are trying to create. It's just an unfortunate side effect to free market capitalism. All disease begins in the gut is another one of Eddie's big claims with him going as far as to quote Hippocrates on the matter. To summarize Eddie's position here, he believes that you need to keep your gut healthy by avoiding processed foods, specifically foods high in sugar, preservatives, and artificial sweeteners, and that this will also help you lose fat. I'd like to highlight another point of agreement here with Eddie, as it is important to keep your gut healthy, and in his diet recommendations, he promotes vegetables and high fiber foods, which is a very reliable way of promoting gut health. Where he veers off is with regards to fat loss, and also the effects of sugar and artificial sweeteners on the gut. There's no strong association between fat loss and gut health. While a high fiber diet can certainly keep you full, the positive impacts that it has on the gut are pretty distant to losing body fat and calorie balance. While there is some research that shows artificial sweeteners can have some small negative impact on the gut, 
There's also research that shows no effect at all, and some that even shows sucralose may have a small positive impact. So currently there isn't enough strong data that would suggest that consuming artificial sweeteners at normal levels of intake have a strong impact on your gut health. Another point Eddie makes in his book is that salt was never the enemy, sugar is. He says, we need salt. Sodium is important for many functions in our body, so make sure there is adequate salt on each of your meals. Although sodium is an important electrolyte in the body, it's not actually true that we need to really focus on getting plenty of salt in our diets. And in the West and Asia, we get more than enough salt from our diets. We know high sodium intakes have an association with high blood pressure and stomach cancer, and that's why the recommendations are to keep your salt intake below six grams per day. Sugar is the enemy. On the note of sugar, we know that once it's not driving you into a calorie surplus and causing body fat gain, and that it's not displacing a lot of other healthy foods in the diet, that it's not inherently bad for you. I actually have a fairly high sugar intake myself, and this mostly comes from fruit and dairy products, but my blood glucose markers are totally healthy, and this is because I control my calories and stay active. Eddie's a massive proponent of having lots of fat in our diet, and this comes back to his whole control insulin to lose body fat idea, and specifically, he wants us to eat lots of animal fats. If we come back to the fact that calories are the most important factor for fat loss, it doesn't make much sense to be recommending high calorie, high fat protein sources. And outside of that, we also don't want to be recommending that people eat a lot of saturated fat in their diet, as this can have negative impacts on your cholesterol and long-term cardiovascular health. I think it's fascinating to watch someone like Eddie become so popular in such a short space of time. And it really illustrates the fact that people gravitate towards simple to follow guidelines that promise big results with health and body composition. Overall, I don't think his approach will help people long term because much of his information isn't backed by evidence, it can have negative impacts on your heart health, and it also doesn't help people foster a healthy relationship with food, which is really important when you're trying to navigate our modern day food environment. Now, if you're looking for a video that does take all this into account, I'd recommend checking out our fat loss guide up here.